Welcome to the next stage of the presentation, which is the performance of the foundation walls. For building this we will use concrete blocks and masonry cement mortar. This part starts on the implementation of the horizontal insulation, which should be placed on the top of the continuous footings that we had made in last chapter. For this purpose we can use the underlie asphalt membrane, which should be placed twice, or as you can see in the video, one layer of heat sealable membrane. In that case, one layer is pretty enough. After lying insulation, we proceed to mortaring the walls. Regardless of the material you will ever going to use for construction of the walls, their execution always starts from the building of corners. To find appropriate position of the corners, we will have to use the directional benches again. This time, knowing that the blocks have a width of 25 cm, we are going to mark 12.5 cm outside from the axis of the walls. Nail these points and join the nails at the opposite benches by string exactly the same way as we did in last chapter. In this way we obtain the determined of the outer edges of the walls, while the points which the cords intersect each other shows us the outer corners of the building. And in this corner we will start our work. Of course as usually the blocks should be carefully leveled and keep the appropriate vertical. Let me tell a little bit about the blocks that we used to build the foundation walls. These are made with concrete class B15 and should be purchased in such warehouse where you can submit a certificate of compatibility with standard construction. The site manager should check if properties of the blocks are meet the conditions from your building specification. Note the date of manufacture because this material must be carried at least 30 days so that the concrete mix has obtained a total hardness. Otherwise, the blocks will crumble during transport. Another important issue is the mortar used for mortaring of these blocks. It must be a cement mortar which contains no lime. The best is book it in a concrete factory then also get a certificate of the appropriate composition of the mixture. Of course you can do the mortar on the building side. In this case note that contractors do not use any lime. You should also pay special attention to the fact that all the joints must be carefully filled with mortar, so after the walls get dry the construction become a monolith hard as a rock. Once on a building site happened to me the foundation wall crack caused by a heavy equipment. Despite the fact that the walls was drying only 3 days, it got broke a thin straight line from top to the bottom. Block wasn't spread as if you would expect. Now let's go back to work. After few layers of blocks placed at the corners are done, we will start mortaring the layers between them. We will use a string to help us. Of the end of this we tie a niles and drive in this into the fresh joints between the blocks of the opposite corners. Remember to use a special string performed for brick laying. Such a string is very elastic, what caused that we are managed to proper stretch it. Strings shows us the plane of the outer walls and determines the level of successive layers of blocks. As you can see, the method of construction of the walls over the time could not be easier and virtually everyone is able to cope with this job. Starting from the bottom after mortaring one layer, we will raise the string up to fill another layer. This way our job become pretty easy and fast and the result of it is very satisfied. 
it is important to remember about a masonry bond, which means that the blocks of the next layer should be offset from the previous one at least several inches, the best about half of the block length. Please pay attention to the width of the joints between the blocks, which should properly be 1.5 to 2 cm. In our case the weld holding roughly the same width as a result of properly leveled continuous footings. If those hasn't been done in the appropriate level, the workers will be forced to alignment the foundation walls by using more mortar in order to compensate the levels. Better if that situations aren't happened. Of course, you should not go to extremes. The difference of 1 cm is not a problem, however 2-3 cm it is something to think about. The next step will be the implementation of the cement plaster. We apply plaster to close the poros of the wall, leveling and smoothing of surface defects prior to the waterproofing. This is a cement plaster, so again as in the case of the mortar, we must remember that this did not contain any lime. Plastering, we not especially worried about the aesthetics. Apply only one layer on both sides of the foundation walls. This part of the work is often ignored by contractors. If you're not going to use a cement plaster, there is another way to fix this part. Namely, we can use a cement stick prepared for tiling and use this material for smoothing the surface of the walls. We will let it get dry a few days before start dealing with a waterproof insulation. As well as in footings case, we used here an asphalt mass. On the video you can observe the way in which the insulation is done. Bituminous mass applied on the wall using a special brushes. When you will choosing asphalt mass, it's very important to check whether the product is intent to come into contact with polystyrene. If you use the wrong stuff based on solvents, it will damage styrofoam. The isolation of the vertical walls are made twice, waiting till dry and proceed to perform the thermal isolation of the walls. To carry out the thermal isolation we use specially made of such conditions of the ground polystyrene. On this particular site, that was aquas yetico styrofoam, which is intended for use in contact with water pressure. It is made in a characteristic blue color. Surface growths that can be observed are designed to facilitate water following along polystyrene. We sticked styrofoam using cement glue designed for sticking facade. 
There is also a glomide based on bitumen, which actually have checked in this particular situation a little bit better. However, be aware that the wall will be bared firmly compacted aggregate and so any detachment of the plates hardly comes into play. Please also pay attention to the fact that styrofoam plates have the top so that the insulation is very tight. After the plates are stick, we will wait until the glue is bond and then we cut the height of the plate foundation wall. Please take care to do this equally. Therefore, after the initial cutting, the plate should be sent with grater for polystyrene. This particular polystyrene is designed to overwhelm it directly to aggregate without additional security. But despite that, together with an investor, decided to use dimplate film, which will provide additional protection against water pressure, both us and also protect itself from damaged polystyrene during backfilling and compaction of aggregate around the walls. This completes the next phase of the implementation of the foundation. Welcome to the next part which will do soil compaction under the floor and on the ground floor execute.